We have finished week five and our Lancaster County football teams are combined 15 and five on the season. Hello, I'm Elena Ely and thanks for tuning in this week's episode of The Playbook. Andrew Jackson traveled to Class A and number five Louisville and handed the Lions their first loss. The Buford Yellow Jackets remained undefeated with a tough win at Cross. In the game of the week, the Indian Land Warriors came up just short in a battle with Parkwood and the Lancaster Bruins lost a road game to White Nile. We took some time and spoke to the coaches about their week five games and what we can expect this Thursday night. We'll be back to hear what they had to say after this short break. Stay tuned for more of The Playbook. Hey, Grant, what you doing at the bus depot? I got to go someplace where I can get everything I love. Incident with one gig speeds, a home security system, a whole home DVR with thousands of shows on demand. Wait, all those things that you love? I know people right here who can get you all of it. Internet, TV, security, and phone. Get it all with Compori, your friendly neighborhood tech giant. Guys, we lean on. They did a really good job, and um, so I mean, overall, it, it, it's sort of like the Lamar game that played a a good team, beat them at their place uh, without some key people, and and so uh, if you can do that, like that, that that's that's a win, and it's it's you know a, a good good place to be at. Dot uh, the offensive line, especially some guys that hadn't uh, played a whole lot got in there and, and did a good job. Uh, we ran for uh, right at 300 yards – or, no, excuse me, I think it was right at 400 yards of uh, rushing, which is huge. Um, and and that that starts with the offensive line. So those guys, you know, opened up the holes. And then when we got backs like Trey and Eli to, to find where the, the open space is, you know, it, it, it makes it a little easier for the offensive linemen. But – I mean, it really starts with those guys. But then on the perimeter, our receivers, they're taking pride in blocking too and, and doing a good job of um, creating space on the edge uh, for for our guys and, and knowing that they're not going to have to mess mess with those guys as they break through that first line of defenders. Uh, and then the quarterbacks, both of them, Hammond and Brady, did a good job again. Um, 
you know, completing passes when we need to and then just managing the game. And so, uh, uh, you know, if, if their number's called to to run the ball, that, that they do a good job. So um, just really excited about the offense uh, when it was time to to get some key scores that, that we stepped up. Defense did did a great job. Um, you know, we Louisville it was very sound on offense. Um, they when when we charted them, it was it was interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen this, but uh, um, I went in and in in our program we got the charted the run to pass and basically their run plays run calls to pass calls because they they got some RPO stuff that they can end up doing. Off of them. But anyways, um, it was 50-50 through three games, which is pretty remarkable that teams talk about being balanced when they, they call plays. But uh, to be that balanced was was pretty interesting to see that. But, uh, um, you know, they, they were they were good. They were averaging scoring over 30 points a game coming in. And, um, you know, we we figured out who their kind of key guys were and, and emphasized that. And it, our defense got stronger as the game went on, I felt and um, came up with some key plays, some sacks. Uh, Devontae Bracey had his best game probably here at AJ um, and uh, had four sacks. So he was basically our defensive player of the game. Um, uh, Fuller Sims did a good job of finding the ball and making a bunch of plays, especially in the first half, first quarter. Uh, but but all of the whole defense um, did a wonderful job because, again, we were, we were without some key people on defense. And, um, you know, when they needed to make plays, they stepped up. Uh, really, the scores that they got, um, offense, we, we had turned the ball over and kind of put them into some bad situations. And so uh, when you play good teams, you can't do that. But defense did what they needed to do to get enough stops for us to get more points than than Louisville. And so uh, it was just another really good game by the defense. Special teams, we we struggled a little bit, and we've already discussed that and, and plan to get better. Um you know, kickoff is is been something that we're working on. But again, if you're missing some defensive starters, that that plays a role in your punt and your kickoff teams. Um, but we should have basically everybody back this week. Um, did a good job though on field goal and extra point uh, kickoff return that uh, we did we did not bad job. We get, we got some things to work on there. But uh, um, you know, overall it, it wasn't horrible. Uh, but it, it wasn't our best game special teams wise. So we've worked a little harder on that this week with the time that we do have. And uh, hopefully we, we do a better job of that tomorrow night. We've uh, got to see quite a bit of, of different, I guess you could say offensive philosophies. And, and so our defense for sure has seen a variety of, of, um, looks and plays and 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 I felt like we've done a good job we've played some very tough opponents I think all but one of the teams that we've played uh, non-region has a winning record um and you know they, they they're, they're good good teams and so having a good idea of what we need to work on who we are going into region is is a great feeling and knowing that um where we need to like practice, put a little more emphasis in, that's really helped out. And the the guys have really done a good job of of taking it one play at a time and then one week at a time. And uh, I think they will continue to do that going into the region schedule. Um, you know, and the other thing that goes with that, we got a little banged up in non-region, but playing some tough opponents, that's going to happen. And so seeing that some of the younger guys could step up and fill in those roles has been good too. Um, and they've gotten some experience. And then now we've been fortunate enough to, to, to basically get back as, to fairly healthy um, going into the region. So I feel like we're in a, a good spot and hopefully we just continue to play with some confidence as we've done and, and uh, keep it rolling. Um, our focus this week, and, and I told them basically it's going to be each week we'll kind of tweak it just a little bit, but it's a win. What's important now? Uh, and to to think about one and oh and and taking that same philosophy of one play at a time, one first down at a time, one uh, game at a time, and just you know each week trying to finish the week be one and oh, 
that that's that's what they're focusing on. And I think that's helped them to realize that if they slow it down to each play and do their best on that play and then go to the next one, that uh, our guys have seemed to have been able to uh, to to take a hold of that and clock in and and, you know, play really well thinking that way. So, um, you know, this this sets us up for the playoffs. And so uh, these games are, are important and uh, home games, especially as we, we only got a couple in the region this year. And so, you know, the, these these are big games. Sheral, Sheral, they they they're a tradition rich team, and and they've got some some good looking players, and do a good job of uh, you know flying to the ball on defense, and then uh, they they're got some playmakers on offense that we're going to have to to keep tabs on, and um, you know we know that it's going to be a tough tough battle that uh, Sheral they expect to win, and uh, you know at a tradition rich school that's that's a big part of it is just that expectation, that belief that they are going to win. And so um, we'll, we'll be, you know, fighting against them on that um, and and know that they're going to be coming ready to play. Their, their record doesn't really indicate how good they are at this point. I feel like they've played a pretty tough schedule themselves. And um, and so they'll, they'll be ready to go. They know that it starts the region and kind of the same thing we were just talking about that um, – you know, this sets you up for the playoffs. And and so these are really big games and we don't expect them to uh, come in and kind of, um, you know, not be expecting um, our best. So uh, we got to be ready to roll. Hey, Grant, what you doing at the bus depot? I got to go someplace where I can get everything I love. Internet with one gig speeds, a home security system, a whole home DVR with thousands of shows on demand. Wait. All those things that you love, I know people right here who can get you all of it. Internet, TV, security, and phone. Get it all with Compori, your friendly neighborhood tech giant. As you set your financial game plan, we'll be with you every play. Relax, you're with Founders. Hey, I'm Carter Osterhaus from HGTV, here with some tips on heating your home comfortably and responsibly, starting with your heating system. Even on the coldest days, nothing keeps your home warm and cozy like a high-efficiency, Energy Star qualified natural gas furnace. You can actually feel how warm the air is. And that's because a gas furnace delivers air that's up to 25 degrees warmer than the air from a heat pump. And you'll have warmer air inside and cleaner air outside. Well, I told him, you know, it's always, it's, Always good to get a win on the road and everything, and it was a long trip for us. And uh, I was, it was, it was gratifying because I don't know if we would have won that game last year. Um, it was a very physical game, and uh, it was the first time so far we had some adversity, and uh, they responded well in the second half. You know, defense gave up 12 yards in the second half, and uh, we finally got a little momentum going and uh, scored some points in the second half. So. That was good to see you. the kids responded. And uh, that to me, that was great to see us. I mean, it wasn't nice coming out there in that first half. And it was, it was tough, but uh, they responded in the second half. I didn't like much in the first half at all. We didn't, we, we didn't, 
do very well. We, we end up getting a touchdown and everything, but uh, we, we started off slow and we didn't, we didn't block very well, to be honest with you. We didn't, we didn't do a lot of things well, but uh, we kind of went through a few things at halftime and then we came out in the second half. And I think what helped us was uh, picking up the pace a little bit. And uh, that, that kind of got us some energized and uh, that helped us. Well, uh, like I said, they were just like the offense in the first half. You know, we were slow starting, and they came out and uh, put us put put us in the hole right away, and uh, we gave up a long one. So we were down fourteen to seven at half, and basically we just challenged them at half that, you know, this is the last game we have before region, and, and I mean, is this this is not the way you want to start region? So. Uh, just a couple teeny adjustments to them, and uh, they came out. Got kids, some kids made some great plays. Got some turnovers for us, and uh, we started hitting a lot better too. We started tackling better, and uh, which gave us the ball. And uh, we did a good job in the second half. Well, you know, Caden had the big the big kick that put us ahead. Um, 16 to 14, we were down in there and we got stuck in the red zone and didn't score. So we had to, you know, we had, had to kick the field goal and that's what put us up 16 to 14. And we kept holding them and then we had another chance to score and, and we scored and uh, that was tough. And that, so, but that was good. Our special teams were good. Um, didn't give up any um, deep returns or anything like that. So, so far, so good, and the kicking's been good. Well, I hope it does because um, other than, you know, it was a long trip and stuff like that, no, nah, I'm not using that as an excuse. Our kids, we needed to be ready, so we need to do a better job of that. And then we got there in plenty of time and stuff. Uh, it woke them up, which was a good thing. You know, they got hit in the mouth pretty good, and – uh that's going to get us for Pageland because they're they're big and physical and fast. Well, I mean, the next five weeks, our focus is the same as to try to go one and zero every week and beat the, beat the region teams. I mean, this is and starting off with them is is a tough one because they, they come right after you. They're going to blitz you to death, and uh, you got to try somehow to control that blitz and, and make a play. And they got good, fast kids over there that, that run to the ball well. Well, no, they're going <laughs> to – I mean, they're going to come after you um, on defense and try to get you before you get them, basically. And we got to do a, a, a decent job of protecting Brody and hopefully get some shots that, that we have time to throw the ball because you just can't sit there and run at them. That, that, that won't work all day. Hey, Grant, what you doing at the bus depot? I got to go someplace where I can get everything I love. Incident with one gig speeds, a home security system, a whole home DVR with thousands of shows on demand. Wait, all those things that you love? I know people right here who can get you all of it. Internet, TV, security, and phone. Get it all with Compori, your friendly neighborhood tech giant. As you set your financial game plan, we'll be with you every play. Relax, you're with Founders. 
Hey, I'm Carter Osterhaus from HGTV, here with some tips on heating your home comfortably and responsibly, starting with your heating system. Even on the coldest days, nothing keeps your home warm and cozy like a high-efficiency, Energy Star qualified natural gas furnace. You can actually feel how warm the air is. And that's because a gas furnace delivers air that's up to 25 degrees warmer than the air from a heat pump. And you'll have warmer air inside and cleaner air outside. Uh, you know, anytime you have a loss, especially a disappointing loss where you feel like, you know, you beat yourself more than the opponent beats you. And that's the no uh, district, uh, you know, that's the, not taking away any credit away from Parkwood. They did a great job of putting us in some bad situations. But I think the biggest thing to take away is that, you know, we have to prepare better, uh, that, you know, we have to learn how to deal with adversity a little bit better. Um, you know, it's the first time we'd been down all year uh in a game and so we kind of got down and started looking around like oh well, who's gonna make a play and this isn't going our way this is not this is always going our way and you know and i think it took us kind of a quarter and a half to kind of realize that and and kind of gather our composure a little bit um and then turn around the fourth quarter and, and have a competitive fourth quarter where you know you're down three scores and to drive back and to give yourself to a chance to you know, at least a chance to, to contend at the very end, I think, to a lot is this kind of shows the resilience of our team. Um, and I think it, at the same time, it showed them that they had the resilience that's needed for the, for them to kind of take down the stretch. Well, it, it was not very good. Uh, our offensive production was not where we needed to be. Uh, we ran the ball. You know, statistically, you look, we ran the ball well. I think, uh, you know, Jaden had 150 some yards rushing on – I think, you know, less than a little bit more than a dozen carries. Quarterback Jackson had, you know, 60-some yards rushing. Uh, so you look at that, and statistically we look, you know, we rushed for, you know, around 250 yards, which is good. But we just did not do a very good job of blocking those guys up front and, and, just, and just finishing the plays like we've been, been all year. And then the past game, we did a poor job of picking up some of the pressures. Uh, and a poor job just, you know, trying to connect on some some passes and just not being in the right spot uh, offensively to help connect with some important passes uh, in important situations. And, and then the biggest thing offensively is, you know, we ha we're a team that's built to stay on schedule, like most teams. And when we're, you know, when, when we're second and six, when we're first and ten, when we're third and short and third and medium, you know, we're, we're a pretty good football team. I think if you look statistically, our third and medium conversion rate is around like 85%, which is excellent. I mean, that's that's absolutely where you want to be. Um, that's because we're throwing quick game well. We're throwing screens well. We're running the ball, you know, in, in the t interior and perimeter well. But, you know, no team is good on third and 12. No good, you know, there's no good play call on first and 15 or second and 25. I mean, there's just not. And we're not built to be that type of offense. So staying on schedule, taking care of the football, and giving us yourself a chance to, you know, to be in winnable situations is important offensively. You know, they did a good job early on, and I thought we did a good job. They had a really good running back, and and I thought we did a good job containing him for the most part. And you know, we got hurt a little bit on quarterback runs. They played a different quarterback than one that we kind of prepared for. One that was a little more agile, uh, a little bit better. You know, is a better runner. Uh, and so we did a, a poor job kind of adjusting at first, but I thought we did a really good job as the game went on, making some adjustments to just the, not just the scheme, but just how we were attacking it. But we got to get off the field. I mean, we can't be in third and medium, third and short, and have a penalty and, and turn it, turn the downs over. They did a really good job of sitting on the ball and trying to control you know, time of possession, uh, which put a lot of pressure, pressure on us offensively. Um, but also kept them on the field a lot. You know, we only ran 47 offensive plays, and our defense has to help us with that. And and they know it, and, you know, just little things of mental, mental breakdowns, you know, not batting the ball down when we should bat the ball down and try to go for a pick, which, you know, gives them a chance to get the ball. And, you know, we had two of those incidents that ended up being touchdowns. So little things like that we got to we gotta get better at. You know, we've been really good at special teams this year. 
uh, been really pleased. Uh, we've done a great job on, on our kick returns, uh, our punt returns. We've done a really good job of, of kind of being penalty free. We bought a lot of kicks. We've recovered a lot of a lot of uh, kickoffs and and really been a, a been on control of the momentum of the game. And we did not do it this game. Uh, really disappointed. We gave up. You know, we had three in a row punt mistakes. Uh, that really uh, one cost us a point, but also cost us a score. But also let, let, let them get the ball on their side of the fifty. As a play caller, uh, and as an offense, when you when, when you get the ball in the plus territory, when you're you know in the fifty in, you know your your playbook's a lot different than when you're on the twenty and you're thinking about all right. I don't want to get stuck here being being third and ten on the twenty, and I got to punt and give them a whole field, you know. So your playbook changes a little bit. Your mentality on first down changes, especially, you know, when you're on their thirty, you know, you're in a four a four down mentality almost. And so, for us, we you know, we just in special teams we cannot allow them to control the field position war. Uh, we have to use that to our advantage, which we did on Friday. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about I told our players is it's not it's not done. It's not the end of the season. Uh, you know, it's just another chapter in the book that we get to come back on on Friday and rewrite a new chapter or write a new chapter rather. And so I think for us is this looking back and you know being retrospective and you know understanding that you know there are mistakes. Like I we started yesterday's meeting by me open up and say, hey, here's some things that I got to do a better job at. Here's some jo- things that I did uh, that I wish I could have done differently. Uh, and I think that accountability, when it starts top in, top down, I think it allows players to kind of understand that, you know, for us as coaches, you know, we're, our job's to teach, but, you know, also if, to teach you guys how to be accountable for it and how, how we can fix it and not just say, all right, I've messed this up. I'm going to keep on doing this uh, and hope it fixes itself. You know, you got to be accountable for it. So I think for us taking time to be accountable for what we have to do and, um, and just realizing that we can't underestimate or overestimate we can't underestimate an opponent and overestimate ourselves. Well, we got to do the exact opposite. We got to overestimate our opponents and underestimate uh, really not our skill set, but uh, what we have to do and, and just over, over prepare, over prepare, over prepare uh, mentally and physically. So I think that has really kind of translated into our practices this week. You know, going and harping on the things that we talked about this off season that we built our off season around, uh, going back and and you know really implementing those and, and encouraging those, I think have been really important to uh, kind of refocus our team a little bit. Well, I mean, you look at our region. Uh, I know a lot of people like to say they have a tough region. I, I would put our region up against anybody, and uh, York is is a heck of a way to enter, enter region play. And, um, you know, I think, you know, one of the messages I had for our team, you know, yesterday is, you know, Friday in, in the five games we played, that's the first time we've been down. It's the first time an opponent has, has been, you know, been up on us. And it kind of shocked us a little bit. Our guys weren't familiar with being in that, especially, you know, one score is one score, but we're down two scores. It's like, oh, my gosh. And all of a sudden now we're down three scores and, you know, people are going crazy. And the message we gave our guys was, look, in this region, you know, York, you know, in particular, like you're going to be in tight football games. You're going to be down. They're going to, you're going to have to battle back. Like, like in York is that way. They are a physical, tough team, have a great quarterback. This is his third year, um, second year as a starter, excuse me, um, really understands what they're trying to do. He's an electric player, uh, can really, can really play. And they have some really good players on defense and on special teams when they kick, they've returned a kick for a touchdown every game. And so a lot of things that, that they do, we're playing at their home uh, to open up region, which I think is going to be important for us to play well on the road. Uh, it's going to be a great test. I mean, it's going to be a fun game. I think we're excited for it. Uh, but at the same time, we know it's going to be a tough physical game that's going to be decided in the fourth quarter. Hey, Grant, what you doing at the bus depot? I got to go someplace where I can get everything I love. Incident with one gig speeds. A home security system. A whole home DVR with thousands of shows on demand. Wait, all those things that you love? I know people right here who can get you all of it. Internet, TV, security, and phone. Get it all with Compori, your friendly neighborhood tech giant.
As you set your financial game plan, we'll be with you every play. Relax. You're with Founders. Hey, I'm Carter Osterhaus from HGTV, here with some tips on heating your home comfortably and responsibly, starting with your heating system. Even on the coldest days, nothing keeps your home warm and cozy like a high-efficiency, Energy Star qualified natural gas furnace. You can actually feel how warm the air is, and that's because a gas furnace delivers air that's up to 25 degrees warmer than the air from a heat pump, and you'll have warmer air inside and cleaner air outside. I want to thank the coaches for taking the time out of their busy schedules to talk to us. Remember, all four county schools are in action this Thursday because there is a high probability of bad weather on Friday. All four county teams begin their region schedule this week. In the game of the week, Andrew Jackson celebrates its homecoming week with a game against Sherrall. Buford stays on the road traveling to Central Pageland. Indianland looks to right the ship as they travel to York, and Lancaster heads to Northwestern for another tough matchup. Make sure you go out and support your local schools this week. Remember the clear back policy at athletic events, and thanks for watching The Playbook.